Okay, so for number 30 is another um, intervals for increasing, decreasing a constant. So if I trace from the left, I am increasing here. And then it's going down, 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 down until I end up there. And then it's going back up, 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 up here. Okay. So intervals of where it's increasing, it happens twice. It happens to the left forever, which is negative infinity, to this x value, which is negative 7. Then it happens again over here from this x value, positive 7, to forever to the right, which is infinity. Then it says select where it is decreasing. It isn't decreasing in one place in the middle. And it would be from this x value, which is negative 7, to this x value, which was, which was positive 7. And then the function is constant. Well, the function was never constant in this particular case. It was never like a flat line like that. Okay. 31 says use a specified row transformation to change the matrix. So negative 3 times row 1. So that would make it negative 9 and negative 12. Added to row 2, so 9 and 5, and we get 0 and negative 7. So they already kept row 1 the same. We just need to fill in the blanks with what we got, which was 0 and negative 7. Number 32 says write the augmented matrix of the following system. It's already set up. X coefficient, Y coefficient, constant. X coefficient, Y coefficient, constant. Those are some nice problems, so take advantage of those, right? Your testing strategy is always to do all the easy ones first so you can get the most points really quick and you can concentrate the rest of the time on the rest of the test. This one is not set up. So I do have to minus 11 on both sides and add 5 on both sides so that my constants are on the correct side before you plug in your values for your matrix. So then my x coefficient is negative 10, my y coefficient is negative 3, and my constant is negative 11. For a positive 1, right, an invisible 1, and a positive 5. Now it says select the choice necessary, so they want us to actually solve this. So how do we solve it? First thing we've got to do is turn that into a 1. So we're going to take row 1 and multiply it by negative the reciprocal of 10. So then the new, and that becomes my new row one. And I'm gonna do that up here. So this becomes one, this will become three tenths, and this will become 11 tenths. If I multiply each individual number by negative one over 10. Row two, we didn't do anything to it, so I'm just gonna write it down. Then I need to get a zero here, so I need to do negative four row one plus row two, so I can get a new row two. So negative four, negative 12 over 10, and negative 44 over 10, and I need to add four, one, and five. So we get zero, we get negative one fifth. You could put that in the calculator if you want to. And here, this one I definitely need to put in the calculator. I get 3 over 5. So my matrix becomes 1, 3 tenths, and 11 tenths, 0, negative 1 fifth, and 3 fifths. Then we want to turn this guy into a 1. So we're going to take row 2 and multiply it by the reciprocal, which is the same as just multiplying it by negative 5. So this becomes 0 times anything is still 0. This will become positive 1, and this will become negative 3. Then we need to turn this guy into a 1. So we need negative 3 tenths times row 2 plus row 1 to give us a new row 1. So 0 times negative 3 tenths to 0, 1 times negative 3 tenths is negative 3 tenths, and negative 3 times negative 3 tenths is positive 9 tenths. And then we have 1, 3 tenths, and 11 tenths. So we get 1, 
we get zero and that would be 20 tenths, which is just two. So the matrix becomes one, zero, two, zero, one, negative three. That translate to it translates into x equal to two and y equal to negative three. Um, if they want the solution set as an ordered pair, then you would be typing in two comma negative three in parentheses so that you have an ordered pair. And we did get an answer here, so this would be the one that we select. Now we have some more, so they may have different kinds of answers depending on the problem. Here it's not ready to go yet. So we get negative 10x minus 3y equal to negative 14. We get 4x plus y equal to 6. So if we put that in our matrix, we have negative 10, negative 3, negative 14, 4, 1, and 6. And it's kind of the same steps because the similar the coefficients are very similar. So next we're going to make a one by doing row one times negative reciprocal, and it's whatever sign that is that's going to be the same sign when you're trying to make something a one because you don't want to change um, you want to change a negative to a positive by using another negative, and if it's positive already, you don't want to change it to a negative. So what do we get there then? When I multiply that, I get one. I'm gonna get positive 310. And here I'm gonna get positive 14 over 10. Or seven over five if you use the reduced version. It doesn't matter. Oops, that's our radio one. Okay, and then now we need to make um, this guy a zero. So we're going to do negative four row one plus row two to get a new row two. So that would be negative four, negative 12, 10, and negative, oh gosh, 14 times four, negative 56 over 10, and then four, one, and six. So that's obviously zero. Negative 12 over 10 plus one is negative one fifth. Negative 56 over 10 plus six is two fifths. So the matrix becomes um, one, three tenths, 14 tenths, zero, negative one fifth, two fifths. And then we need to turn this guy into a one. So we use the same sign negative and then the reciprocal five over one or just five and then we want to turn that so we're going to do negative three tenths times row two plus row one to get a new row one so zero negative three tenths positive six tenths one three tenths 14 tenths, we get zero, or I'm sorry, we get one zero. Zero plus one is one. These guys together make zero. That actually makes 20 over 10, which is two. So we get one, zero, two, zero, one, negative two. So x equals two, y equals negative two. So I do get a single solution, two comma negative two. Now, let's see number 35. It may be a little bit different. Let's see. So here we're going to put it in the matrix. So 3, negative 6, 3, 6, negative 12, 2. Make that guy 1 by doing 1 third times row 1. And so that becomes 1, negative 2, 1. Now we need to make this guy 0 by doing negative 6, row 1, plus row 2. So that becomes negative six, that becomes positive 12, and a negative six. So we get zero, zero, and negative four. So the matrix turns into this. Now you would try to make this guy a one, but you can never make a zero one, because there's no such thing as a reciprocal of zero. 
So that means we need to turn this back into equations. This means x minus 2y equals 1, and this means nothing equals negative 4. But that's a contradiction. That's not true, which means I have no solution. And when you have no solution, it's like a, a set with nothing in it. And that's called an empty set. Okay, so when you have no solution, that's the same thing as an empty set. There's no answer in the set. Okay, let's try another one. So before I do this one, I actually need to get rid of these fractions. The common denominator here is 21. So I'm actually going to multiply everybody by 21 first. Here I get 7. So I get 2x minus 7 times 1y is 7y. And then I just have a 5 left. The bottom, I'm going to leave it the way it is. And then now I'm going to put it in the matrix form. And so first step is to get that guy to be a 1. So I'm going to do row 1 times 1 half. And we get 1, negative 7 halves, 5 halves. Then negative 4, 14, and negative 10 stay the same. Then we're going to do positive 4 times row 1 plus row 2. So 4, negative 20, or negative 14 actually. And then 4 times that would be 10. Put row 2 underneath. And we get 0, 0, and 0. So our matrix looks like this. Now next step would be to turn this guy into a 1. But if it's 0, you can't. You, there's no such thing as the reciprocal of 0. So we can't do that. So we go back into the equation form. 1x minus 7 halves y equals to 5 halves. And here's equals 0, which is an identity. That means I have an infinite number of solutions. And it's telling me to write the solution set like this, where it wants the x coordinate comma the y, which means that y is going to be my arbitrary thing. So all I got to do is take this equation that I do have and get the x by itself and then I'll know what expression represents x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 7 halves y to both sides so that that cancels and I get x equals positive 7 halves y and positive 5 halves. So what expression do I use for x? This. And that's what we get for number 36. We got two more problems. So this one says the waitress sold 19 ribeye steak dinners and 12 grilled salmon dinners, totaling that amount on a particular day. Another day she sold 29 ribeye steak dinners and six grilled salmon, um, totaling that. How much did each type of dinner cost? So we're gonna say X equals the cost of the ribeye say y equals the cost of the salmon. And so we're going to set up the first equation. So um, 19x plus 12y equaled 579.44. And for the other one, it was 29x plus 6y equal to 582.82. And so we can put that into a matrix and we get, um, I think I'm going to use another sheet of paper for this one because I'm running out of space. So we get our matrix would be 19, 12, 579.44, 29, 6, and 582.82. So we want to get this guy to be a 1. So we're going to do 1 over 19 times R1, and that becomes 1, 12 over 19, and I have no idea what that one would be. Oops. Divided by, or times 1 over 19, 
I get this crazy fraction, but it's okay. Just leave it alone. And just write it down and keep going, okay? Now we gotta change this to a zero, which means I need to do negative 29 times row one plus row two to get a new row two. So that means negative 29 times one, which is negative 29, 12 over 19 times negative 29 is this weird fraction. And then that weird fraction times negative 29 is another really weird fraction. And then put these guys underneath. So we get zero. That just happens to be what I get. Plus this weird thing. 582.82. Let's write it as a fraction. I get negative 286509 over 950. So that's what I get. 1, 12 over 19. Just be very, very careful to write everything down correctly. That's where the mistake is going to happen is when you miss uh, copy something. not necessarily that your math is bad it's just when you're rewriting something you're bound to make an error with all these numbers going on now we got to turn that to a one so I'm going to use the same sign but the reciprocal to get the new row two So anything times zero is still zero. This reciprocal times that reciprocal is gonna give me one, but I am gonna to have to do this weird number times a fraction negative 19 over 234. And so I end up with 24.487 blah, 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 blah. And it says round to the nearest hundredth as necessary. So this seven is actually gonna make that become, um, right now we'll leave it as a fraction. Just leave it as a fraction um, if you can. If you can't, just write down as many digits as possible. Okay. Okay, now we need to change that into a zero. So we're gonna do negative 12 over 19 times row one, or I'm sorry, row two plus row one. So let's see, we get zero, negative 12 over 19. Keep that number in your calculator and just do times negative 12 over 19. Write down all those decimal places and then put row two underneath. Or no, I'm sorry, row one underneath. So this would be zero, this would be, or I'm sorry, this was a one. Row one has the one in front. So zero plus one is one. Negative and a positive of the same will be zero. Here I'm gonna leave that number in my calculator the way it is, and I'm just gonna say plus one four four eight six over four seven five. This is a really ugly problem. I doubt that they're gonna give you problems that ugly on the on the test, but for some reason the problem I got in the review is just ugh, very ugly. So now we write the matrix. 1, 0, 
15.0307692 and 0124.4879 now that means x equals 15.30 i'm sorry 0, 030 0, 7 and so forth y equals 24.4879 and so forth. This is money, so round it to the nearest cent or the nearest hundredth. Zero is not going to affect that, so x is just 15.03. If I round that, I'm going to get 24.49. And so, um, that means that the cost of the, if we go back to our equation, our problem here in the computer, that means that the cost of the ribeye steak was X, which would be 1503, and the cost of the salmon, which was this, would be 2449, okay? Um, that was really ugly because of those crazy decimals. But I don't think the next one's gonna be that bad. That probably is more like something you'll see with a little bit smaller numbers and no decimals going on. So it says the price of six citrons and one fragrant wood apple, ap 11 fragrant wood apples, is 92 units. The price of 11 citrons and 6 fragrant wood apples is 112 units. Find the price of a citron and the price of a wood apple. So here we're going to say x equals the citrons, y equals the apples. So we've got 6 of the citrons, 11 of the apples, and that came out to 92. Here we had 11 of the citrons and six of the apples, and that came out to 112. So if I put that in my matrix, I have six, 11, 11, six, 92, 112. For this guy, I'm gonna do one six times row one. So I get one, 11 over six, and um, 46 over three, it reduces apparently. Then 11, 6, 1, 1, 2. Then we're going to do negative 11, row 1, plus row 2 to give us our new row 2. So negative 11, negative 121 over 6. Negative 506 over 3. So we get 0. If I add that in my calculator, I get negative 85 over 6 here I get negative 173 so then now we need to get this to turn to 1, so same sign, 6 over 85 times row 2, and we get 0, 1, negative 170 over 3 times negative 6 over 85, comes out to be 4 coincidentally. Then we need to turn this guy into a zero, so we're going to do negative 11 over 6, row 2, plus row 1 to give us a new row 1. So 0, negative 11 over 6, negative 44 over 6, um, which is the same thing as negative 22 over 3, if you reduce it. So 1, 11 over 6, and 46 over 3. So we get 1, 0, um, 24 over 3, which is just 8. 1, 0, and 8. 0, 1, and 4. So x equals 8, y equals 4, which means the citrons was 8 units and the apples was 4 units. So that's a little bit like, I know there were fractions in the middle of the problem. It didn't have these weird, crazy decimals throughout the process. So this is probably the numbers wise is probably more similar to what you'll see on the test um, maybe not the scenario but as far as the way the numbers are working out I don't 
pretty sure you don't have a problem as ugly as this one on the um, actual test. It's just too much of a headache and the process and everything else is already hard enough, right? Um, but at least you have examples of how to work um, things out. So I'm here, I'm going to write just number 37 continued so that when I upload everything, it'll kind of be there for you. Um, but that's it for the review.